Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Matt Vapor here, aka the Matt Vapor. It doesn't really matter, whatever. Who cares? I'm Matt. Who, whatever. But I got my new fatality here. This is the QP Fatality M25 here. So it's the 25 millimeter base. It's got the wider bubble glass on there that I like because it holds a little extra juice. So it's all right, whatever. But um, today I got to re-wick this thing because I used the juice and it is definitely darkened my uh my wick there and whatnot so i gotta re-wick it up and i figured i might as well shoot a video and do this and i'm really sorry for this there is going to be kind of a, a weird shot because i don't have the equipment to sit here and hold up my phone and do this with both hands and everything at the same time so um what i'm going to do is it's going to be sitting on a bottle so you're going to be seeing the side of the bottle as well as the inside of this now I was going to shoot a, a build video but once again it's really tough to actually get a view on this thing because I don't have a tripod, I don't have anything like that. I actually hold my phone or I set it up against the wall and so trying to build on it and get a shot to where I can actually show how I build it is kind of tough. But anyway I will try and do this and show you how to re-wick the fatality to where I don't get any leaks, I don't get any problems with it, the thing juices up great. It is fantastic and I absolutely love this thing with the dual airflow. So you have the bottom airflow there, controls the center inside, this this top airflow here, so you can see it there, controls the sides. And I will show you that uh, when I take it apart here and you can see the inside. So as you can see, like I said, it is on a bottle here, and I am sorry for that. It's just kind of the way it is, and no, that's not what you think is in there. That's that's coffee in there. It's just some of this Maxwell House iced coffee shit. You shake it up, and makes good stuff. It's all right. But anyway, what I do, I still got a little bit of juice in here. I am going to clean that out and everything, and I'm probably just going to jump cut that one. But um, what you got to do, take it apart, just twist it, okay? And that's gonna pop it apart. Oh, look at that, look at that, that's gross. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. That's gross. So, yeah, I definitely need to change this out. Should always have a paper towel, it helps. So me, a lot of people are gonna use tweezers and stuff like that, me, I'm ghetto. Once again, I'm the Mad Babus, you know, I just do stuff ghetto, so I just grab it with my fingers. We'll pull it out of there. That is absolutely disgusting. Bad. Bad. <sighs> and I know that looks really bad, but it's actually it was just a really dark juice. So, <laughs> but as you can see here, possibly my camera focuses on it. Look at my coils, gross coils. So we're gonna burn that off of there. Me, I kind of scrape the stuff off. Another way to do it is what they call shocking the coils, which is another way that I probably will do it here in just a minute. Um, is where you have some cold water and you heat up your coils, heat them up to where they're red hot, and then hit them in the water. Okay, but then you have to shake off the water and everything and make sure that it's dry. So I'm going to go do that really quick and make sure that these are nice and clean. Alright guys, so we can get this thing all cleaned up and everything, make it all pretty. Ooh. See the inside now? Just so that way you know it's not burn spots or anything in there. I still got to dry that out a little bit more. But anyway, my coils aren't the prettiest. I know it doesn't really matter. But one thing I was saying is the build on this thing is really awkward because these legs are only about three and a half millimeters. So if you have a tool, that's really great. You know, you can measure out three and a half millimeters and then cut your legs and it fits right in there and it works beautifully. If you don't have a tool like me, then you're ghetto as hell and you just eyeball it and you end up with coils that look kind of, kind of goofy. But you know what? For eyeballing three and a half millimeters, man, I think I did all right. So it's okay. It doesn't really matter. But what I was talking about with the airflows here, check it out. You got this bottom one down here. That's going to control 
the airflow right here in the middle. Okay, you see that little honeycomb airflow there? It's kind of got all those little diffusers. And it's got the little diffuser in the middle. And I tried popping that out, and uh, it, it doesn't seem like it wants to pop out. So if you pop it out, I'm sure it's going to be like a one-time use. It's going to pop out one time, and you may not be able to get it back in. Me, I just decided I didn't want to pop it out, so I didn't try any harder. But anyway, this top one here, so this dual airflow, the top airflow there, is going to be... Let's see if I can get this part in focus. All right. So as you can see here where the coils are, coils right here, here's those little slots, and that is the side airflow. So when you got the side airflow there, you got your bottom airflow there, and they're controlled by these two air rings. Now, here on the side, this is your juice slot. So that's where your juice comes in, wicks your coil, or wicks up, yeah. It, it juices your wick, wicks your coils, all that good stuff. And on this guy, it's really kind of nice. I don't know if I can show you. I can show you from the inside here. You see that slot right there? That slot is where the juice flow is, and it's fully adjustable on here. So you can turn it completely off or have it fully open when you're doing it. It's a nice little thing. That's why I love this thing. It has so many options to it. You can, you can change it around. You can change your airflow. You can change your juice flow. If you want less, more, however you want to do it. Now, of course, when I'm doing my wicking and whatnot, you know, product placement. Ooh, I use my cotton bacon and I use the Prime. I like the Prime. It wicks like crazy. So it's really great if you're using it in RTAs or something like that. RDAs are good too, but I still prefer my cotton bacon uh, V2 in my RDA because it absorbs more juice and just holds it as opposed to wicking so fast so when you juice up it can actually hold the juice in the coil whereas this one here is great for rtas because it just wicks like crazy all right so get a little piece there of cotton Forgive my fingers, I know, I'm a working guy, I, I do a lot of stupid things with my hands and so they're kind of beat up and funky looking. But I take my cotton there, and got the end of it, All right, and you just twist it up. Other people use those ones that have like the little shoelace aglet on the end. Well, I, I don't see much point when I can just twist it like that. And look, look, look at that. That looks like a cute little aglet to me, doesn't it? All right. So what you do with that little guy there is you send him right through your coil. You gotta make him a little bit longer. You gotta make it just long enough to where it'll actually go through the coil. Which if you notice here, I have a, I think it's a seven wrap. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I have a seven wrap. These are 26 gauge, so it's, it's 26 twisted one direction and then 226 twisted the other direction. And so it's it's a ghetto makeshift zipper coil. It's not one of my favorites, but I, uh, I like doing the, the 28s are nice. The 26 is great. I like doing the 26 with the night chrome, but I didn't have the night chrome. So I did it with the canthal and the canthal heats up a little bit slower, but that's, that's okay. It still works out for me. So you're going to want to pull that through and you just want this tight enough. You don't want it too tight. You notice that it's snug in there, but I can still pull it it still has slack and you don't want to be sitting there yanking on it back and forth too much because then you break the cotton and it pulls a huge chunk off and then you got to re-wick it <laughs> so once again as i knock my phone off see told you this is tough it's okay though, I got this, I'll figure it out. I'm ghetto, remember? All right, got my other piece of cotton here, I got to aglet it up. And one thing you wanna do is when you pull the cotton through, you wanna make sure that if you do this with your fingers like that, you wanna pull the cotton through far enough that none of that part that you mess with with your fingers, like that you twist it up with your fingers, is gonna be inside the coil or in the juice or anything like that. You wanna have it out of the way. Okay, so where the aglet is, it's, it's way over here now. See, and the reasoning for that, a lot of people ask me why, why I would do that. 
it's because you have oils on your fingers. Okay, you got oils on your skin, oils on your fingers, oils on everything. And so anytime that you twist something like that, even if you just wash your hands like I just did, it's still going to get oils on there. And uh, that definitely affects the taste of your juice and everything like that. So it's not so bad if you just touch it for a second, you know, but if you're sitting there twisting it in your fingers, it gets all that oil. Forgive the scissors once again. Ghetto don't have any real scissors. So this is going to take me just a minute to cut these. But what you want to do when you do it is when you look at the side here, you pull your cotton down and you see where that juice well is, that's where you want to cut it. Pretty simple, right? So you want to measure that out when you do it. And like I said, these, these scissors are really bad, so it takes a little while to cut through cotton. Oh, look at that. There we go. It's not too long. And when you do it, once I cut the first side, I measure it out again and make sure that it's going to actually get down in that juice well. Because if it's not, then what I can do is I can pull it through from the other side just a little, or pull it through and give it a little bit extra. But get it right about there. And then you do the same thing on this side. You measure it down. You can cut it right there. Once again, I have to cut it, I measure it, real simple, right? Easy peasy lemon squeezy right there, and that's the way it goes. Pretty simple stuff, and then uh, once I do that part, hang on, let me find something. Okay, today I'm going to use my flathead, because that's the way it is. Once again, I'm ghetto, so I use what's around me. Got my flathead here. I normally have like an Allen wrench, a pin, uh, a loose piece of wire or something like that that I can do this with. But you know, pretty much anything that has an edge, has a little spot like that. Something that can just kind of catch the cotton. And I go through. And you gotta sit there and kind of brush out the cotton. Now I'm one of those people, I do this a lot differently than other people. They say that you don't want to take out too much, you don't want to do this or that. You see all that stuff coming out there? Me, I'll put it on top of my thumb, okay? And I'll brush it out. I'm sorry that this thing doesn't want to focus very well. Here you go. I'll put it on my thumb there and I will brush it out. And that makes everything in line. So it kind of lines up all the fibers in the cotton and then it pulls out all these little fuzzies on the end. And I'll just grab those little fuzzies and throw them out. Boop. There it is. See? It's fuzzy. Alright. Once you do that, I check it out. Make sure that it's nice and clean. And I'll kind of go underneath sometimes and do the underside too. And just get rid of these little fuzzies. I know a lot of people will cut these off, but a lot of people also have scissors. So, poop on them. So, what we got here... Go over, and then we do the other side the same way. I put it right on the back of the thumb. At least I do. You don't have to. I just do that so that way I have something behind it so I can press against. If I have a loose piece of wire or something like that, I don't normally have to do this because it just goes right through the cotton and actually grabs onto the little fibers, and it does absolutely fantastic of combing out the cotton, as they call it. You little poof. Get that little poof. The underside a little bit there make sure that it's all combed out and brushed out and purified that's what i like doing and if you notice a lot of people also cut this cotton at an angle right that's one thing i have yet to really master last time i did that i had a leaking problem like crazy and so i'm not a big fan of doing that but the way i do this is it, it works just absolutely fine so i have it cut and you can see how long it is, right? And so I'll take one side and I'll stuff it down in the hole. All right, and then you take the other side, kind of cross over it. What I do is I kind of overlap them just a little bit and I will 
push that side down in the hole. And so they do overlap just a hair right there in the middle. Okay. And then also with this guy, I'll go across the top right here. And I'll make sure that there's nothing blocking that juice channel. I'm not trying to pack the cotton in there or anything. The cotton is still loosely packed. You can see it. It's nice and poofy still. Okay. I'm just trying to make sure that there's nothing that's gone down there and doubled over and folded up in the way of the juice well. So once again, over on this side, and I am kind of OCD on stuff, so I'm very sorry that I do stuff really awkwardly, but I always end up doing that left side first and I'll push it down in there and then I'll fold the right side over and I'll push it down on top. And so once again, press it down all around just, just right there at the juice channel. Don't, don't press it in and squish up the hell out of the cotton or anything like that. If you notice, my cotton still, it still looks good. Sometimes I'll go in here and just kind of get a little poofy poof. You know, make sure it's, it's nice and poofy. We want, we want to have some poofy cotton. It's good that way. You know, soft cotton is great. So, now that once we got that. You look at that. Doesn't that look beautiful? See how it is in those juice wells? You might be asking, oh, but you put your screwdriver in there and now you got a gap in there and everything like that. Well, at the same time, when you put the juice on there, the cotton's also going to expand. And so the cotton fills those extra gaps. Plus, that's another reason why I overlap them down here on each other. So this one is filling up a lot of that gap anyway. And then this one is just kind of backing it up. You know what I mean? Once you get it to that point, of course, what you're going to do, you get your handy dandy juice there. I like my snob milk from the Liquivana there. It's uh, snob juice, snob milk, yes. Delicious for me. And I'll put a little bit down the juice well. And people say I juice it differently than others. And yes, I, I know, I, I do everything differently than others. So that's not really a special thing to me. That's cool. I, I appreciate being different. That's awesome. But I sit here and I'll take my time. Let it soak in. Because unlike a lot of people that are in a hurry, I'm actually... I, I do this to kind of calm down, relax myself, and enjoy. So, why do I want to rush that? When I go over the coils here, I do have... I hit the button just a little bit, right? You just pulse it a little bit, a couple more shots over the coils, pulse it, and you notice that the juice is soaking into the into the coils and into the cotton. Because what it does is that heat softens up the juice. That VG is pretty thick, so when it gets heated, it becomes more liquidy, less viscous, less viscous, sorry. <coughs> and so it'll soak in. Now also when you're doing this, realize that just because your cotton is saturated does not mean that your cotton is actually broken in. All right, there's a huge, huge difference between saturated and broken in. Broken in means that it has been used for a little while and it is at its maximum absorption rate. Okay, so when you hit that thing, when you hit, hit your vaporizer, as soon as you let go, it will absorb liquid at its fastest rate that's that's kind of what it means when it's broken in as opposed to when it's brand new it's still getting used to it it's kind of like an engine when you're breaking it in you use a different kind of oil and everything like that and it, you might find a little bit of metal shavings in there just from the engine actually breaking in and you know creating itself you're not going to find any metal shavings in your cotton but at the same time it's not used to being you know heated and absorbing juice right away so that's what the whole break-in process is when you're rebuilding it's not as crucial to do the whole break-in process um, you will still get the flavor right off the bat but um, but you will notice that the flavor changes a little bit as it breaks in different cottons are different also 
Uh, some cottons will break in faster than other cottons. Uh, the cotton bacon prime here is a pretty good example of that. It breaks in very quickly. So as soon as you wick it up, you get it in there and you start hitting it, it only takes you know, a few hits before it tastes the way it's supposed to taste. Oop, I got a little bit too much juice on there. That's all right though. That's one thing when I do it. See, flick out some juice. I make sure my wicks are wet. I ain't going with no dry wick. That's so nasty. All right. So now that I got that all put back together like that, you know, we got it firing. All right, ooh, ooh it's pretty, right? So what are we looking at here? I don't know if you can see the resistance on there. I gotta change my batteries out here real quick. But we're looking at a 0.23. Sorry for the cops going by or whatever it was, but we have a lot of activity here, even though it's a small town. It's really funny. Um, but you'll notice on here that we are at a 0.23. I run 110 watts, and it does go up there a little bit. And uh, it's delicious. I love this build. But now you've seen how to wick it, right? Looks pretty self-explanatory. Now, just to put it back together, look at that. Oh, it's clean. Just to put it back together, just put that on top. And with the M25 and the original Fatality, they are different, okay? The M25 Fatality, I don't have the original one, but I do know somebody that does have the original one, and he's told me this. So that's how I know. Not only told me, but shown me that this was a difference that they made with the M25. So with the M25, you'll notice when you put it on, it threads. Okay, so you thread it on there, and that's how it goes on. With the original Fatality, if you get one of those instead of the M25, and you'll notice the difference between the, between the two because the M25 narrows right here, and the other one does not. It's just the 28 straight down. Um, but you'll notice that... Fire truck. <laughs> <laughs> You'll notice on the original Fatality that it's a lot like the top cap. So when you see the top cap here, to take it off, you do like a half turn clockwise and it comes off, right? So when you put it on, it's a half turn back and it's locked on. On the original Fatality, it's the same way with every piece on there. So down here, to take that off, instead of threading, you would just turn it about a half turn and it would come off. So they did kind of change that with the M25, and I, I prefer this design over that design because that just really would suck. You try to adjust your juice flow, and boop, oh, your tank comes off. So talk about juice flow problems. Now, if you can see inside there, you can see in there. Sorry, I got juice all over the place. I know, it's leaking. It does that when I juice it. I juice it too much. But that's the way I am. I make sure that it, it juices up quite well. <laughs> So if you can see in there, you see where I was talking about the juice flow control, okay? And on that juice flow control, when you turn it, oh, look at that. Now you can see the wick fully open in there, right? And then you turn it farther and it cuts it off. So you have fully adjustable juice flow control, fully adjustable bottom airflow control, fully adjustable side airflow control. All right, this, I, I, I don't know, I, geez man, I'm just at a loss for words with this thing. I love this tank, I really do, it's fantastic. Plus look at this, look how you fill it. You take the top off and look at the size of these fill ports. Oh, look at this bottle, look at this. Oh, it's just, it's so small in there. It looks so pathetic, doesn't it? And then another thing that's really nice about the way they designed the, the Fatality here, I'll show you here in just a second. Oh yeah, here we go, fill it up. Ooh. Now, if you don't know about this juice at all, I don't know if you guys do or not, but you can go on, so you check it out there. We got Snob Juice, uh, it's called Snob Milk. It is a rainbow, or sorry, rainbow. It's a strawberry custard with graham cracker. It's absolutely delicious. It's been one of my favorites for years, um, and it's it's still one of my favorites. But if you want, I can. Uh, look at that. Ooh, there it is. Man, one of my favorite juices, though. Um, 
strawberry custard with graham cracker crust. And so you see in here, you fill it up. And let's say you don't have the top on, okay? So when you take the top off, that juice flow control is closed, right? And you'll notice here it says off and on. And if you think that's something with the camera where it's backwards or anything like that, no, no, it's, it's true. So when you turn it clockwise, it is a reverse thread. You turn it clockwise, it comes off. When you put it on, you turn it counterclockwise until it locks right there. And then once it locks, you open it up. All right, sorry about that guys. Had a customer come in, dog started going off, everything was going crazy. But uh, come on camera, focus in here. I can get the camera to focus. Hey, I had a good shot. All right, finally got my camera to focus in on here. But um, so what I was showing you is you got your juice flow. So if you notice when you turn it clockwise, it turns the juice flow off and then unlocks the top cap. So when you open this up, your top is not open at the same time that your juice flow is. So they actually designed that. See, so when you put it on and you count, you do it counterclockwise to lock it down and then open up that juice flow. So it's a really nice design because even then when you go to open your deck or anything like that, you can just turn that down but then, of course, it is in your deck, so when you go to open it, it's going to do that. But you turn it upside down, once again, the juice flow is so low in it that even if you have almost a full tank of juice in there, you can still take the deck off, or take the deck out and work on your coils and re-wick it, do whatever you want to do with it, and still keep your juice in there. It doesn't go all over the place because the ports are so high up, well, when you turn it upside down. So... We're gonna take this bad boy outside and we're gonna vape on it a little bit once I change the batteries. Hey, what's going on guys? Back up, right, I'm outside here and uh, I'm outside because once again, if you're from Oregon or anything like that, you know that there is the Indoor Clean Air Act, which uh, includes vaping indoors. So even though we're at a shop and whatnot like that, we can't vape indoors. So I vape outdoors and you know, whatever. I guess I'm just create. I guess I'm helping the atmosphere. If you think about it, I'm helping the environment. I'm creating clouds when there's no clouds out. I mean, look, there's plenty of vapors out here. Cause look at all the clouds around, man. We got beautiful clouds. So there must be some vapors in town. I'm just waiting for them to show up here. It'll be great. But anyway, rocking on top here, we got the Fatality M25. Don't get it confused with the original. It is a little bit different. Once again, like I said, it has the threading right there. It does shrink down to a 25 millimeter, which makes it great on the Tempest because as you notice, it still has a little overhang over that weird little bevel. So the 28 would have definitely looked ugly as shit, but I still would have ran it because that's just the way I am. I don't really give a damn. I don't care about what that looks like as long as it works like crazy. My original mod back in the day was made out of an electrical box and copper tubing that I hammered out, bent around, shaped up to make a parallel mechanical box mod. It looked like a pile of shit, but it worked better than anything I had at the time or anything that a lot of people had at the time. Never failed and it always was great. But anyway, with my ghetto zipper builds, as people call them because they're not made the right way where you take three strands of 28, twist them together and do all that shit and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, whatever, it still works. So I run 110 watts. I did change out my battery so that way it will run 110 watts because it was dropping down to like 90. As you can see there, it's 110 full batteries. Woo! And we're still reading it a 0.23 on it. And my juice flow, I do like it fully open. But if you don't wick it right, 
<laughs> like when I cut those little angles on mine, I had to turn my juice flow down to like less than half and it was still a little bit too much. But once again, you can adjust that to different juice viscosities. If you have thinner juice, thicker juice, you can change it, adjust it to that. Um, the airflow, you can fully adjust so that way, uh, however your preference is. Mine is if I open up that bottom one all the way it creates a little bit of turbulence in there you kind of notice that and i don't i don't like it a little bit so i turn it down a little bit to smooth it out but once again that's personal preference i know some people that run the bottom fully open and the top closed or the vice versa or however whatever combination that's the whole point of having an rta like this is you can do it however you want and there's no wrong way unless you build the coils wrong and shorts out and then of course that's a wrong way but let's go into that and something else right let's hit this and find out Yeah. So as you can see, I'm helping the environment. I'm working on clouds out here. If you're wondering the way I run it, like I said, my juice flow is all the way open. I have the top air on here, which is the side airflow. It's all the way open. And then the bottom one is normally about halfway shut. Okay, and that kind of, that smooths it out a little bit to where it, it just, I like it better. I don't know. It's, it's a personal preference thing. Everybody's going to have their own preference. And I know that everybody out there is going gonna, is gonna to say that they like it a different way. And that's totally cool, which is exactly why I love this RTA. Because you can sit there and adjust it to however you want to do it. You can build whatever coil you want. You can build single coil, dual coils. You can have the adjustable airflow, the adjustable juice flow. So you can... This thing is just, it's, it's fantastic. It is, and the flavor out of it is awesome. With the build deck right there, it still has kind of a short throw for a tank. So, it's great. It really is great. So if you're looking at getting a tank, and you want a rebuildable one, sorry for the shaking, I'm outside in a t-shirt and it is kind of cold right now. But uh, <laughs> if you're looking at getting a tank, and you want a rebuildable, I definitely suggest this one or there's another one that's called the Vandy Vape Triple. That one's pretty cool too, but it doesn't have all the options. See, so it doesn't have the adjustable juice flow. It doesn't have the dual airflow control and stuff like that. But that one's another good one that's that's great to, to work on and vape on and everything like that. But once again, I got the fatality. I had to splurge. You know that I'm broke. I'm broke as hell. And that, that's okay, but... I wanted the fatality, I wanted a rebuildable. I rebuilt this thing and oh my goodness, man, I'm definitely not regretting my decision. I love this tank, it, it, I just, I love it. So if you guys are out looking for a new RTA, a new vape tank that you can rebuild yourself and everything, you know, save yourself a little bit of money on, on buying new coils because every coil now is like, you know, five, seven dollars. Uh, some of them, some places go up to like 10 bucks. Um, so, I know that coils are getting expensive, and you saw what I did just now. I'm using the same coils, okay, the same exact coils that I've had in there for a while now. All I got to do is pull the cotton out, put new cotton in. Guess how much that cost me? That's going to cost me like a few cents each time I do that. So, if I got to change my cotton once a week, like I do with coils, I'm costing myself less than a dime a month think about that less than a dime a month I'm waste, I'm spending on cotton versus buying how many coils you're looking at five dollars a piece okay even if you're looking at you find a deal you get like a three dollar coil three dollars a week okay at four weeks a month you're looking at twelve dollars a month Okay, $12 a month, and I'm talking less than 12 cents a month to rebuild, all right? Now, if you can find somebody like me, maybe you can catch me on the side or something like that, and, and somebody can build something for you. Somebody can do do a build or something like that, you know, and and save yourself some cash. You can spend, I mean, I mean somebody, they used to, I don't know if you can anymore, I think it's, it's kind of made it uh, illegal nowadays or whatever, 
to um, build for somebody else if you work for shops and stuff like that. And uh, But something you can do is people used to charge to build a coil. You spend $5 on a coil and then that's the last $5 you spend. You can keep that coil. Some people, man. You can keep that coil for like a year plus. I have coils still from years ago that I could still reuse. Honey. Sorry, people walking around out here. So, anyway, people walking around out here getting my dog all riled up and whatnot. It's okay, though. Um, what I was saying is, is, instead of spending $5 for a coil every week, okay, instead of, instead of replacing your coils every week, I know that it's really simple it's really easy a lot of people like doing that it's just some of them are even plug and play so all you gotta do is just pull it apart put it in and you're done those are nice but people wonder why rebuildables are great i love the flavor of them because you can build any coil that you want or have somebody else build a coil for you you can do claptons fuse claptons you can do juggernaut coils volcano coils zipper coils uh chain links there's there's just so, so many, so many coils out there that all have, you know, you can get different flavors or whatever, different preferences, different people like different temperatures, different things, you know. So that's one reason I like rebuildables. Plus with the rebuildable, like I said, you can redo the cotton. If you like the coil that's in there, like I do with mine, I got my zipper coil, my ghetto zipper coils, whatever you want to call them. And uh, I roll with my ghetto zipper coils and I can keep those in there for, I guarantee you, I can keep them in there for like over a year and just re-wick them, re-wick them, re-wick them, re-wick them. Cost me less than 12 cents a month. So, if you're if you're one of them bargain vapors, you're looking for a better deal on stuff and, and stuff like that, then why go with a tank where you have to spend $5 a coil? I understand that that's convenience. But, you know, if you're trying to get... The sad thing is, is this isn't even just the cheaper route to go. It's also the better tasting route to go. It, it's, it's just more customizable. It's more fun. But <laughs> I understand a lot of people don't vape for fun and everything like that. But I, I enjoy it. it. I really do. I enjoy doing it. I enjoy the builds. I enjoy the wicking. I enjoy talking about the tanks. I enjoy talking about the electronics. The, the whole you know all, all the different calculations that are involved with figuring out your ohms your resistance your voltage your wattage and just everything that comes along with that i'm a nerd <laughs> and i'm a nerd that likes to do stupid things so you know when it comes down to like batteries exploding and stuff i've tested it i've done it i've had batteries explode i, I know what it's like and so I can actually tell people, you know, not only from stories that I've read on the internet or anything like that, but from personal experience, what it's going to do when a battery explodes. It doesn't normally explode right away. It takes a second. It does. Especially with the batteries nowadays, they have safety precautions and everything. So that, that's a different video. We'll go into that at a different time. But anyway, fatality. You want rebuildable? This is one of the ways to go. It will give you the most options. The only thing is you want, you want easy functionality, something that you can just set it forget it don't ever worry about anything you know the airflow is always going to be wherever you want it set the, the juice flow is just the same all the time everything like that then go with what go with what you know but if you want to try something new you want to try something that's rebuildable something that is just badass and awesome with flavor with customization with whatever you want to do with it go with the m25 fatality this thing is cool and it does also come with a little spacer inside for uh t the two millimeter two millimeter two milliliter tpd compliant stuff with straight glass it comes with the bubble glass it comes with this little glass protector it comes with a bunch of extra stuff extra tools extra set screws um or uh grub screws inside there that are uh comes with flathead ones and the allen heads so i tried the allen heads I, i'm not a big fan i'm kind of dying out on those i found myself a flathead that works perfect on all these small flathead grub screws so you noticed it earlier when I was doing my cotton. That flathead is fantastic. I found it on accident and it is my favorite rebuildable tool now. Because even if my screws are messed up, it it bites them and makes them work. So anyway, guys, 
that's M25 fatality if you want to get into rebuilding if you want to get into anything like that this is one badass tank to try and do and if you guys like this video if you guys want to see more if you'd like to see anything that I do or any of the buildings you want to see some tutorials you want to see certain products you want to see anything like that just hit the like and subscribe button down below Leave a comment letting me know what you want to see, what you want me to do, what you'd like me to do. And um, I will uh, I will gladly try and oblige as long as it's safe. And even if it's not, I'll probably try it anyway. That's cool. You know what I mean? So, I mean, some people had questions about battery safety. And like I said, I will make a video about battery safety. I just need a... I'm looking for a battery that's not good. You know, my batteries are all great batteries they work so awesome i just really don't want to get rid of one you know what i mean if anybody out there in the in the in the social world digital world whatever the hell kind of world youtube world facebook instagram anywhere if any of you guys uh got a spare battery just uh that you guys want to donate to the cause of showing people exactly what the dangers are so i can i can go out and i can short it out purposely and blow it up let me know, throw me a comment, and uh, I'll get in touch with you. All right, later, guys. Dave on.